Hello, I'm Kirk Hansen. I'm Executive Director of the Markala Center for Applied Ethics at Santa Clara University. We are very privileged to have with us today Chief Justice Myron Steele of the Delaware State Courts. Chief Justice Steele has been Chief Justice since 2004 and has served on the Supreme Court since the year 2000. Prior to his service on the Supreme Court, he served on the Chancery Court and in a number of other levels of the state courts uh, in the state of Delaware. Chief Justice Steele, we're delighted to have you with us. It's a privilege to be here. I'd like to focus in this short video on what the special role is of the Delaware courts in corporate law and governance in the United States. How would you characterize the special role that both the Chancery Court and the Supreme Court, which you had, uh, plays in, in uh, corporate law in the U.S.? Well, we were very fortunate historically in that in 1910, when Woodrow Wilson became governor of New Jersey, he enacted through his legislature a series of statutes that suggested to the national business community that New Jersey might not be the best place to charter. <laughs> I'll leave it as benignly stated as I can. Uh, I like to analogize to George Washington crossing the Delaware for freedom in the revolution from the shores of Pennsylvania to New Jersey. New Jersey chartered corporations crossed the Delaware for freedom and flexibility to Delaware. Delaware had a general corporation law that's generally referred to as an enabling statute. They were, the law at the time, as the General Assembly in Delaware constructed, placed jurisdiction of that enabling statute mm -hmm. in the Court of Chancery. The Court of Chancery, historically, is a court of equity. It's a court that has the jurisdiction of the High Court of Chancery of Great Britain at the time of the separation, which is the way in which it's phrased mm -hmm. in our law. And the, legislature wisely placed jurisdiction over the statute in the Court of Chancery, which was a unique combination of law and equity that no other state has ever really successfully copied. That gave you a flexible enabling statute mm -hmm. accompanied by a court which had historical equity jurisdiction, so the strictures of the law courts don't apply. Hmm. The emphasis became the common law interpretation based upon the fiduciary relationships of directors of a corporation to shareholder investors, mm -hmm. focused on the way in which directors, with sufficient accountability through fiduciary duties, carried out their role to manage and direct the corporation for the benefit of the corporation and its investors. Let, let me ask, what, what advantages do companies have coming to incorporate and, and have their uh, conflicts adjudicated in Delaware versus other states or a federal chartering of right. some kind? Well, the first is the enabling statute itself, which allows flexibility in the internal governance structure of management of the corporation and that relationship between the directors as fiduciaries and the shareholder investors. So you look to the statute first. The second thing you look to is that the Court of Chancery are five judges typically appointed to the court with business law experience. Mm -hmm. It is a non-jury court which means judges must do their fact-finding. Mm -hmm. You know what facts were important to them when a case is concluded because they tell you in a written opinion. Mm -hmm. They apply principles, doctrinal principles of corporate law to those facts and reach logical conclusions about the outcome of the case. Mm -hmm. What this does for the business community is create a record of predictable results. The opinions are designed to be consistent with one another. Mm -hmm and they're written to be clear. So there's no uncertainty about why did a jury make the following fact find? Mm -hmm. what, why did a jury conclude that this was a good practice or a bad practice? The Delaware judges tell you what is an acceptable practice in carrying out your role as a fiduciary when you've breached that mm -hmm. responsibility or duty and what the consequences will be. So it's a significant degree of predictability comes out of a large body of written work. Some people have argued that the Delaware court or the Delaware law is easier on corporations. Others have argued that it's actually a higher standard. Why do companies keep coming to Delaware for um, this incorporation and such? Well, if I were marketing Delaware, I'd say the three products that we produce that are attractive are predictability, consistency, and clarity. Hmm. I think 
an argument uh, typically characterized as a race to the top or a race to the bottom mm -hmm. is an argument that's mis misfocused. You, you have to recognize first that Delaware law is traditional corporate law in the sense that it's clear that it's director-centric. Mm -hmm. What that means is there's a focus on how directors comport themselves, whether their actions are consistent with their fiduciary duties, with an accountability scheme. Mm -hmm. we, there are several mechanisms to check an abuse of director authority. They're all available with expedition in the Court of Chancery, with expedited review by the Supreme mm -hmm. Court where necessary. So the other ingredient that business sees that pleases them is a fast result. By mm -hmm. any measurement nationally, Delaware is the most expeditious jurisdiction in resolving business disputes. Um, in uh, uh, the process of, of seeking resolution of corporate conflicts, right. some have argued that, that we're about to enter a period in which there'll be sh much more shopping for jurisdiction. Um, uh, conflicts with shareholders, conflicts with uh, customers, and so on. Uh, is this something that you see coming? Uh, is there anything Delaware is doing to try to uh, maintain its position as a respected court for resolution of corporate issues? Well, there are two answers to what I will take to be a double question. The mm -hmm. first is, I don't think it's coming, I think it's here. Mm -hmm. There's no question there's forum shopping going on. The second thing is, is Delaware concerned about it, which would cause us to do something mm -hmm. about it? What we're doing is we're making sure that we keep the standards that we've set for predictability, mm -hmm. consistency, and clarity. We recognize, as our case law says, that there's nothing magical about Delaware law. Mm -hmm. Competent jurisdictions elsewhere can understand Delaware law for the same reason business likes Delaware law. Our opinions are out there. Mm -hmm. They're widely read. They're widely, if you don't mind me saying so, copied by others. The principles of corporate governance that mm -hmm. we elucidate in our opinions are in the public domain. Mm -hmm. We have opinions that say, well, why would we assume that some other jurisdiction couldn't properly apply Delaware law. We think they can. Mm -hmm. We follow a first filed rule and we react to multiple filings in the same dispute looking first at where did the plaintiff choose and we recognize that choice unless if they file in Delaware even later we may not stay or dismiss the Delaware mm -hmm. suit if it's a fundamental principle of Delaware law that has yet to be articulated by the Delaware courts then we will hold on to the case even at the risk of an inconsistent opinion with another jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Now, why would some people choose to file in another forum? Well, for some people, uncertainty is a benefit. Okay. While predictability is a benefit for business, uncertainty, it can be argued, I think, fairly, is a benefit for plaintiffs. One, one more question about Delaware's role. We have a, 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 and we hadn't talked about uh, mentioning this, but in a global era with global commerce and disputes arising not just in the United States, but perhaps between an entity in the U.S. and an entity right. abroad, or between uh, two entities abroad that might want to might come to you, how is that going to change? Delaware's role in the next 10 to 20 years? Well, we've tried to respond to that by initiating in the Court of Chancery a, a mediation and an arbitration process where it's done by our judges, not by outside mm -hmm. mediators or arbitrators. You can, if either party has a tie to Delaware, either principal place of business mm -hmm. or chartered there, you can file in the Court of Chancery for mediation without a complaint ever formally being filed mm -hmm. with the court. You pay a fee for that and then it's mediated or arbitrated. We're seeing an uptick in international contracts that come to Delaware mm -hmm. in the M&A context in particular that are resolved by mediation and arbitration. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most recent proposed international treaties under the Hague Convention is one for forum selection uh, within a contract, mm -hmm. even where jurisdictions do not have either a principal place of business or a charter in that jurisdiction. We're trying to focus on the international work and make ourselves available and encourage in business contracts that people make a forum selection as well as the choice of law selection, and we're open for business. Thank you very much for giving us an introduction to uh, Delaware and corporate law. Thank you. Thank you.